Now here we are, on day number one. The rules of this challenge are pretty simple, I just can't touch any blocks that aren't mine or else I die. We got lucky with the spawn on this one. A village, a lava pool of trees, it's all gonna come in handy. Now slabs are a very reliable transportation method, so it's important to get a lot of them fast. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot of those slabs, so it's right to chop it. I'm also gonna need food, so that way I don't starve to death. Thankfully I very ethically harvested this pig's pork. After getting plenty of slabs, I made my way over to the village. And you gotta know, I immediately began robbing them of all their possessions. The village actually had a blacksmith with BANGING LOOT! This is really gonna put me ahead. But it got dark on me pretty fast, so I just rested in this villager house for the night. And just like that, it's already day two, and that tree would actually make a great base. So I bridged over there, and evicted the sky from his house. And then started making the tree more homely. It's also important to note that I can't touch any of these leaves, so I'm actually gonna have to cover it up with slabs. There was a guy trespassing on my land, and I tried to capture him, but I messed up. And that resulted in my first death. Don't you worry though, I got my revenge on that villager on day 3. And then I assassinated the town's guard. I run this village now. I also did some base improvements, you know. But I actually used a lot of my wood on the base improvements, so it's back to chopping, I guess. On day 4, I put up a fence. It's a bad neighborhood, I don't want any zombies or creepers getting in. I also totally potatoed while building this water pool. I fell right onto that block, are you kidding me? Didn't you read the sign? No soliciting! I decided to celebrate that wandering trader's death by doing some base improvements. And interestingly, most of the saplings I planted around my house grew really big. Meaning I have more trees which I'm actually allowed to walk on and can put stuff on. It's really cool. And now it's day 5 and we're immediately going to put that fact to use. That's right, I'm building a cobblestone generator. Which means unlimited blocks pretty easily. Unfortunately, this thing is super slow, and of course, half my drops get yeeted into the lava. Oh, see? There it is. Yep, cobblestone right in the lava. Are you kidding me? Now it's day six, and I'm doing something a little more interesting. You see, I'm looking for a cave so I can get some iron, because iron is just awesome. And it looks like I just found one. There should be plenty of iron in there. Oh my god, and I found some already. This is perfect! Later on, I also got some gravel. You'll see why. Also, yes, I am allowed to be in water. It's not a solid block. Using that iron and flint, I want to start doing the villager trading stuff, but I'm not going to be able to if this keeps happening. Look at him, he's running over the stairs, he's totally defying me right now. He knew the horrors I was about to commit. Yeah, seriously though, I gotta fortify the place to make sure that doesn't happen again. I finished it on day 7, but it's kind of ugly, we might have to come back to this. The rest of the day I spent just chopping trees, I'm going to use sticks to make emeralds. I mean, I also got sand, but that's not really interesting. Next day... Actually, wait, I actually made emeralds on day 7. This is the best day so far. Day 8 was more of just the same. I'm trying to level up my toolsmith. But now I'm craving that adventure, so let's start bridging somewhere. I'm not really sure where I'm gonna go. I'm just gonna bridge in this direction for a while until I find something. And it looks like I just found a cherry blossom biome. That's some high-quality wood right there. Huh? Unfortunately, I'm only a few stacks of slabs short, so I'm gonna have to go back and do some cobblestone mining. I actually mined so much cobblestone, it's getting dark on me, so I'm gonna have to go to bed. Ooh, you see that cave down there? That's gonna be important later. But well, later is not right now. What's happening right now is the cherry blossoms, which I finally reached on day 9. Man, I love the cherry blossoms. Can't wait to stash them in my chest and never use them. Uh... Alright, I slept and now it's day 10. This is Operation Get My Stuff Back ASAP. I used water to get down and then I started breaking and replacing dirt to get my stuff. But once I got my slabs, you know, it was just smooth sailing from here. Also, apparently one of my villagers escaped while I was gone. I don't know how that happened, but I got him back. Yeah, after that death, I just decided to relax, you know, take it easy. Put in some windows in the house, looks pretty good. Now it's day 11 and I'm finally demolishing the floating roof in front of my house. I also put some trees up here, I want to be able to get logs really fast. Did somebody say logs? That's right, just a little bit of chopping and the murder of this bee. Oh yeah, I got so much wood today, we should start calling this place the deforest. And of course I'm putting it right to use with the storage room. I have a lot of items now. Well, a lot is kind of a strong word. I only really need four chests. Day 14, I decided it's finally time to go to that cave that I found earlier. I'm hoping to get iron, redstone, and coal from this adventure. Ooh, a lot of coal, that's gonna be helpful. Also, just got so much iron, that is straight dopamine of mine. Bro, 10 iron, that is ridiculous for don't touch anything standards. Day 15, I'm trying to build a sheep pen for some profits. And as you can see, it's just going flawlessly. Ugh, getting the sheep in the pen is already a massive pain. A pain made even worse from the creepers. 
thankfully, after a long day, I actually end up getting them in, finally. And now I'm ready to exploit them. But first, I need some cobblestone. And I also need some redstone, which I got on day 16. I actually got a lot more than just redstone. I got some blue stone, too. And, of course, I got some yellow stone as well. I violently ripped off some of the sheep's hair and used it for beds for the villagers. We all slept comfortably. Ugh, sorry, I'm gonna have to put off the sheep farm for another day. I'm gonna steal some villagers' crops. Oh my god, that whole area looks so ugly already. No time to dwell on that, though. On day 18, I started gathering the materials for the sheep farm. And now I'm actually building the thing. It's gonna automatically shear sheep, and then the wool is gonna be collected from a minecart below. It's gonna be really ugly, but I don't really care what it looks like, at least for now. I ended up getting one sheep in by the end of the day, that's not bad. I actually ran out of iron though, so I'm back in the mines trying to get some more. But there wasn't enough iron in that cave, so I actually found another cave by the forest and explored that on day 19. Alright, this cave is actually way deeper than I thought, maybe I should come back. Yeah, I decided to leave for now, there's no use going down there when I might die because my gear is so terrible. That's actually kind of a lie, I did go back for cobblestone, but I went back later the same day to get some iron. Do do do, don't mind me, just minding my own business- ah! Hmm, that's weird, there's kind of a lot of mob spawning in this cave. This was a really satisfying spider kill, you can see it nearly knocked me off my platform, but I stayed on and killed it. All that slaying really gets you tired though, so it's time to go home. On day 20, I placed on a lightning rod. My house is completely made out of wood, so one lightning strike would ruin my whole career. Then I went to work on the sheep farm and realized there's a bunch of squatters outside of my house. What the hell? He must not have known that squatters rights don't apply in this state. Well, I guess it's finally time to work on the sheep farm. Hey, what are you doing in here? It's fine. I really don't have time for murder right now anyway. We gotta get the sheep farm done. But honestly, just get used to the sheep farm in the state. It's not gonna be done until day 98 anyway. Also, this is kind of embarrassing, but I put two minecart hoppers instead of just making a rail and using one minecart hopper. I had gold! Why didn't I just make powered rails? Don't worry, I realized later, but that is so embarrassing. Unfortunately, some sheep escaped, and then I publicly executed them, so that way the other sheep knew not to mess with me. But overall, it was a pretty productive day. We got two more sheep pods done, and I'm also trying to make the area look nicer, but I don't really know what to do with it. It's very ugly. Still trying to make the farm look good on day... Wait, what day is it again? Can you guys remind me what day it is? Day 21. Oh, now I remember. Thanks to these people for reminding me. I only ask people in my Discord, so if you're not in my Discord and you want to be in the video, there might be more opportunities like this if you just join it. On day 22, I made a singular emerald off all the wool I've had. Get used to it, this really isn't going to be that profitable for me. I must have still been committed though, because I made a farm for wheat to breed the sheep and also a little food for myself. And then I just mined an outrageous amount of cobblestone. Honestly, I think I might have a disease. After mining cobblestone into day 24, I got to watch this iron golem suffocate. That was pretty entertaining, I guess. Which sounds morbid, but it's a video game. I could be as violent as I want. No, I don't have a problem. There was actually a surprising amount of iron golem slaughter today. That's interesting. I also finally gave the sheep, like, a real collection system. That's a huge revelation for me. But yeah, after all those mini projects, it's time for a little storage management. Whoa, that's a lot of stone axes. I'm also still just working on the sheep farm on day 25. If only I knew that this farm would be so inefficient. I wouldn't have worked on it for this many days. Selling wool can be profitable, but you have to cure your shepherds first, which I didn't do. Day 26 was all wood chopping. Next day. Day 27, I finally found a way to make the sheep farm look good. I put up these cobblestone walls. And now I think I'm finally proud to say that I built this. On day 28, I finally got tired of traveling in and out of the villager partition in order to leave the base. So I ended up installing this new room next to it, which I can use. Day 28 is actually really important. I finally made the back of my base look good. Like, this actually looks nice. It looks premium, you know what I mean? It may just be cobblestone, but honestly, that's enough for don't touch anything. Day 29, I'm really craving that danger, so I'm setting out to find a cave to explore. Also, yes, Arthur, in the back, I am allowed to walk on carpet. It's legal. But there's actually plenty of iron in this cave. Surely it's not too good to be true, right? It was. But yeah, now it's early on day 30, and I really gotta get my stuff back. I did, I got everything. I was calm and collected about it, but that was really embarrassing. It may be embarrassing, but it is definitely good content. But yeah, despite that mishap, it was actually a very successful outing. Look at all that iron, that's crazy! I wish I could say day 31 was as interesting, but it really was just as much as sheep stuff. But hey, we're a month into the video now, so you know, maybe you should uh, subscribe. <laughs> wink wink. On day 32, I finally built a roof over my house. Actually wait, false alarm, we gotta get more birch wood. 
There we go. Now I'm finishing the roof. Day 33 is kind of when I realized that sheep farming really isn't going to make me a lot of profit. So I started bridging to the jungle to get jungle saplings. You see, jungle trees can be mined really easily and provide a lot of wood. And that wood I can turn into sticks, and the sticks I can trade for emeralds. It's simple and easy, but it's life-changing and efficient. And don't take my word for it, just look at the data. The numbers don't lie. By the end of the day, I had four saplings, but I got nowhere to put them, so I just kind of threw them on the ground. But now it's about time I address the food shortage. This farm is barely enough for me. How am I going to be able to breed villagers with this? So I started building a new one, and it's going to be way bigger and look better than the old one. By the end of the day, I finished about half of it, and I plowed through the old farm and put a road through it. I got big plans for this farm. On day 35, I'm expanding it even more. But by nightfall, it's officially done. On day 36, I awoke to an iron golem suffocating in the wall. I know today is going to be a good day when I see that happening. It really was a good day because I finally got my toolsmith to start selling me iron tools. You can see how excited I was just because of my mouse movements. And then I spent most of the day collecting lava with my singular bucket. Sorry if you got whiplash from that. I was trying to do the quirky edit thing where everything happens really fast. But yeah, I got all that lava to make another portal. Although I did wait until day 37 to actually go to the nether. And the first thing I did when I got in there, and the first thing you should always do, is block up your nether portal because it's extremely dangerous. Seriously, the nether is not a joke. You gotta be careful. Especially, don't touch anything. I honestly didn't really do much while I was here. I just kind of grabbed some gold and looked around. I was very afraid of the nether. I didn't even spend a day in there. Instead, I just experimented with paintings. I also finally bought that iron pick I was talking about from the day previous and expanded my cobblestone generator now that I can mine two at once. Oh, and also look, we have a visitor. I showed him good old don't touch anything hospitality. And now I'm starting gang wars because I really need bones. You see, my jungle tree hasn't grown since I planted it and maybe bone mealing it might help or it's just in a bad spot. I don't really want to talk about what happens next. It's really not that serious. I got my stuff back on day 38. And then I tried bone mealing the trees, but oh no no no, it looks like they're uh, way too close to that wall. So I kind of just stuck it in the middle of the farm i promise i'll have a better area for this later this is the moment i realized this is going to be my most profitable venture yet and you know i celebrated the only way i know how for the notes of day 39 it just says jungle tree which is very accurate today was just jungle trees but you already know i made bank off those sticks this is the most amount of emeralds i've had at once this far i woke up to something beautiful on day 40 and i finally bought an enchanted diamond axe from the villager this is huge i can chop wood like there's no tomorrow not saying i couldn't do that before but in the game i can now huh? i decided to break it in by attempting to kill this iron golem and at night i made a blast furnace that's right it's time for diamond armor but i don't know why i'm in the nether on day 41 i must have got sidetracked i wanted gold i don't even remember why i grabbed some glowstone and then built what i like to call the gazebo behind my portal it's basically just a little shack that i can kill piglins in safely well put safely in quotes it's okay i took a break and got myself on day 42 what Huh? You shouldn't be here. Go back to where you came from. And then I was sent back to where I came from. It's okay, I got my stuff back now. Let's get back to construct. After all those deaths, I just spent my time making it safer and more efficient. I really can't die anymore. But then I flew too close to the sun and died again! But after that, I just decided it was time to go home, so I left. The best part is I spent three days on this and I never go back to it. But new day means new project. Honestly, those jungle tree profits have really stuck with me since I started them. So I'm building a dedicated place to chop jungle wood. It's gonna have three spots dedicated to big jungle trees, which I can chop down for sticks. Construction's still going good on day 44. And this suffocating squid marks the end of the construction today. Well, actually not yet. I just wanted an excuse to show that clip. There we go. Now it's finally done on day 44. But now I need bone meal for the tree farm, so I'm collecting some of that during the night. Day 45 was chopping and emerald making, but you see that? That's right, I can get diamond pickaxes from my toolsmith now. And then I killed skeletons during the night. And then I hit this enderman, which died and teleported at the same time. That was strange. Day 46. I wanted to put up that ender pearl I collected, but I accidentally threw it, and since I was at such low health, I died? I had no idea where my stuff was. I checked in my storage room, I checked in the villager partition, but it turns out it was actually on the roof. I'm glad I have my stuff back, but I'm sad I lost the ender pearl. Those things are pretty rare. It's okay, I forgot about it when I made stonks. And I finally bought a diamond pickaxe, and I'm feeling unstoppable now. With my newfound pickaxe, I made a new cobblestone generator on day 47. I gave it this really strange roof. I don't want it to look like a factory, but I don't know how I feel about it. And then I dismantled the town's church. The villagers will worship me now. Day 48 started with the demolition of the old cobblestone generator. And then I went mining in that cave, which feels like it was from forever ago. I got some black stone, some red stone, some tan stone. 
and while slabbing through this cave, I turned a corner and saw some diamonds. You can tell I was really excited. These are my first and only diamonds in the entire video, and they're gonna be used for an enchanting table later. But then the cave really opened up, which means it's gonna be more deadly, so I decided to leave for now. Now it's day 49, and I really wanna get into enchanting, so I created a little sugarcane farm to get some paper for books. Also, look at this phantom sugarcane. You can see I look at it, and then I look away, and then when I look back, it's there. Place your bets on what happened in the comments below. Turns out when I placed it, it didn't load, but that was too cool of an effect not to show. Now it's day 50, and I remember that I also need leather to make books. So I went to the cow field and, you know, kidnapped some cows. And let me tell you, it was a whole episode getting them back. I was scared that they were gonna fall off and die. I was scared they'd accidentally fall off the platform and then I'd lynch them. But luckily, that never happened. But when I got back, I really wasn't sure what to do with them. I ended up pushing them down this water stream, and as you can see, the first one went down easy. But the second one, well, he resisted. Tried to flow up the water and, well, uh, died. I just gotta stand there, like, I'm in shock, thinking of all the work I have to do now. Oh, and also about how we really value the cow's life and realize that it's gone. Honestly, it's whatever, I ended up getting another- nope, nope, you're not allowed, sorry. By the end of the day, I got both of them in, but there's still one more thing I need for enchanting. That's right, it's obsidian, and I went straight to the lava pool on day 51. Also, this isn't enchanting related at all, but I made this compost machine. But yeah, with that newfound space from demolishing the cobblestone generator, I made an actual enchanting room. Finally used those cherry planks from a while ago. But I actually ran out of wood, and I'm not gonna use jungle, I gotta keep it consistent. So I went to the deforest forest to get some oak. It's done. Well, it's done enough. Day 53 was a whole lot of nothing. Just got a weaponsmith. Also, can we just appreciate how many villagers I have now? Next day, I finally got my first two pieces of diamond armor. This is crazy. I never thought I'd get this far in this video, I'm not gonna lie. I celebrated by creating and destroying some life. You gotta know, throughout these last, like, 20 days, even when I haven't mentioned it, I've been chopping and making profits every single day. But I've spent a lot of time at base camp lately, and I just want to get away. So on day 55, we're going on an adventure, trying to find the ocean. But now I need something to talk about, so... You know, all this rafting has reminded me of when I learned how to sail. Now, if you don't know, I know how to sail. Like, real sailboats, it's pretty cool. I know, right? I go outside? Shocking. But yeah, when I was first starting out how to learn, I went to a camp for it. Now, nowadays I'm a pretty good skipper, but back in the day, I was terrible. I sailed the boat straight into a buoy and the rudder got stuck. And then when we got pulled up by the instructors, I got yelled at, so that was fun. You know, this area looks kind of familiar. Wait a minute. Yeah. Turns out I went in a big old circle and didn't find the ocean at all. That's okay, I'll try again. Now it's day 56 and I'm digging a canal. There's a big river near my base, but it's not connected by water, so I have to dig a canal there. I'm hoping it's connected to the ocean. There's still a little bit more digging to be done, but I know it has to be over here. I can feel it. And it was. I hope you didn't doubt me. I'm always right. I started building a beach house over here, but I ran out of wood, so I gotta go back. Also, here's some footage of me kidnapping a turtle. I finished the beach house on day 57, and then I started planning the area for what I like to call the rig. It's literally just a monster farm, but you know, I want to give it a cool name, come on. But yeah, I pretty much just worked on the rig the rest of the day, went back for a quick supply trip on day 58, and then I continued working on it for the rest of the day. Day 59, same thing. I actually finished it by the end of the day, but oh, it is slow. I took the rest of the day off and just killed monsters at this thing. And then when I got home, I- well, well, actually, that might be a little bit graphic. We should probably blur this. Nah, it's fantasy violence. It's okay. Last thing I did is I placed some bookshelves around my enchanting table. Day 60, I'm chopping trees in a different forest because the other one got ravaged beyond belief. I mean, there's a reason we call it the deforest. And with all this new wood, I'm expanding the villager partition. I wanted to keep the open feel it had, so I'm still using fences and slabs in the design. And I liked how it was surrounded by trees, so I put some new ones around it. And by the end of the night, I got it all done. These villagers will have a lot more space. And then I ended the day with some chopping, and I took some really good screenshots of my base room up here. Day 61 was an insane amount of profits, and I also got Surge Protector on accident. See, I knew that lightning rod would come in handy. I made over a stack of emeralds today. That is ridiculous! And then I spent my entire paycheck on the funny sneakers. What the- Day 62, I built another layer to the rig. How interesting. Yeah, let's just go the next day. This sucks. Well, actually, one mildly amusing thing happened on the night of day 62. A trident drowned was in the water. I killed him, but he didn't drop the trident. Cheapskate. Day 63, I skinned a few cows and made some more bookshelves. Also, since my first diamond axe was getting really low on durability, I decided to put it up on the wall. And then I finally leveled up my armorer to master so I can buy full diamond armor. Although I don't have enough profits to do that yet, I still need a helmet. Back to chopping. Back to trading. There we go, now we're in full diamond armor, baby! Looking good, looking good. We finally reached a stack of days! Too bad I spent the entire day just at the rig killing mobs. I don't even know why I built this, this is such a waste. 
I don't have footage for day 65, so this is day 65. It just says stood around and did nothing, so it probably wasn't even important. We are 20 minutes into the video, though. Go comment nice cow breeding. I don't know what you mean. At least on day 66, I'm doing something a little more interesting. Now, remember when I mentioned that the oak forest by the world spawn is completely destroyed, thanks to me? I think I'm gonna rebuild the forest, but I'm gonna use different trees. I'm kind of just making my own biome. Instead of oak trees, we're going with cherry trees, because they're unique. Now with all the saplings I have, I'm gonna cultivate the new forest on day 67. Wow, just look at how terribly I destroyed this forest. I'm really excited for how this is gonna look in the end. I love terraforming projects in Minecraft. Some of them are already growing, and I'm not even done. This is gonna look great. It feels so surreal walking through this forest now. I actually just got an idea on how to make this place look even more unique. That's right, I'm planting bamboo all over the ground too. It adds to the flair, it makes it feel like I didn't just move a cherry blossom biome. But after a long day of spreading invasive species, I just marveled in my creativity. Day 68, I'm collecting tons of exotic blocks for something I want to build. If you look at the day number, you'll know why I need these. And of course I slept with the villagers on the night before my big day to increase my luck. Oh, it's the big day! I'm so excited! I loved looking at the deforest ever since I made a new biome there. So I'm gonna build some new property. It's gonna be one wacky house with tons of exotic blocks used in it. And also, since I'm here, the rest of the trees will grow, yay! And of course, you gotta know this property is lava front views. Of course, since it's day 69, we have to make an amazing bedroom under the house. You gotta know it's gonna have deep slate. That's one of the rarest blocks I have on me right now, believe it or not. This really is gonna be the best- Wait, do you smell that? Oh no! Lava front view is probably not the safest idea, but I don't care, I'll adapt. And of course I made a little watchtower to overlook the deforest. I guess it's not really a deforest anymore, but we'll keep the name. And of course you gotta know I slept immaculately in this underground bedroom. Oh yeah, the fire feature? That's a nice touch. I was just enjoying my breakfast on the watchtower on day 70, and suddenly I saw a zombie wearing full iron armor! I totally forgot they could even do that, I thought they could only wear leather, gold, and chain. And then I saw another enderman and I killed it and I actually got the pearl! This Airbnb seriously gives me good luck for some reason. When I got home, I committed cow genocide, and I finally finished my enchanting room. I ended up getting prop 4 on my chest plate, efficiency 4 on my axe, and efficiency 4 and unbreaking 3 on a different axe. I was just too lucky. Day 71 is a momentous day. I finally doubled my storage. I have that many items now. I killed cows the old-fashioned way, because the ones in my farm are still babies. Killing babies is fun, but you don't get leather from them, unfortunately. And then I crafted a lectern. You know what that means. That's right, it's time to get mending. I actually got it fairly quickly, but you can see I'm heavily considering just trying to get it for cheaper. Yeah, I'm sure I'll get it. YOLO. This is taking a long time. I keep getting such terrible enchantments. Wait, was that Smite 5? By the end of the day, I got it for cheap, and I bought it immediately so that way he wouldn't change his trade on me. This is tangentially related, but this weaponsmith is really playing hard to get. I end up selling my iron to him because iron axes don't give enough XP and bells are way too expensive. But you know, I've been needing iron for a while now, so I think it's finally time. It's time to build an iron farm. I end up finishing the basic setup for it by the end of the day, and then I catch the zombie during the night. Day 73, I built the rail for villager transportation, and then I exiled the shepherd to the iron farm. That's what you get for not making me enough profits, bro. It's nothing personal. And then I ended the day by digging the kill pit for the iron golems. Day 74, I'm at the Airbnb. Love going there now. Just thinking about life, you know. I'm waiting for baby villagers to grow up, so that's why I'm here. By the time I got back from my vacation, one of the villagers grew up, so I pushed him into the iron farm. Day 75, still waiting for them baby villagers. I'm going fishing. I never go fishing. Day 76, I finally finished the iron farm. It's done. This will produce me free iron automatically for the rest of my days. I'm never gonna have to mine for it again, which is good because mining is dangerous in the don't touch anything challenge. The iron farm is crazy efficient. Already on day 77, I could afford an anvil. And then I finally combined all the amazing axes I've been stockpiling, and I named it Wheaton's Woodwhacker. I was gonna call it Wheaton's Woodwanker, but I don't know, it just sounds off to me for some reason. Wasn't recording for day 78, so now it's day 79 where I- <gasps> What happened? Why are the zombies? Turns out a zombie somehow got in and it poisoned a bunch of my villagers. Thankfully, two of them are nobodies, but one of them was actually my armorer. I had no plans for this at all. I just trapped him in the stairwell while I got the materials to cure him. I was getting ready to cure him, but then I realized I didn't have blaze powder to power my brewing stand. So, now I'm in the nether, let's just get this over with. I actually haven't found a fortress in this world yet, but luckily the one I found was insanely close to base. Also found the blaze spawner fairly quickly, and I am terrified! 
You can tell how terrified I am in this clip. All my movements are jittery and shaky. I'm very anxious. Not just because the blazes will light you on fire, but because their blaze balls have really bad knockback. Eventually it got really out of hand, and I just decided to leave. I had enough blaze rods. When I got home, I brewed the potion, smashed it over the guy's head, and waited for him to get cured. Honestly, all in all, that was pretty fun, and look at those deals! I was excited! But then on day 80, something was wrong with the recording. You can hear I'm doing something, but it's stuck on the pause menu, unfortunately. Let's just go the next day. Wait, what? Well, why is it old? Yeah, day 81's broken too, so this is day 81. I made some stone tools, got wood, made an ugly house, and then stepped on a block that wasn't mine, so I lost. Back to reality on day 82, it's still broken! But luckily day 83 is when I figure out the issue, and now we're back! The whole villagers getting poisoned thing really stuck with me, so I built this glass ceiling in the villager partition while we were gone. I'm pretty sure that's all I really did though, a lot of it was iron farm AFK time. I also died some of my sheep, you'll see why in a few days. Day 84 I'm trading, but this time not for emeralds. I want to get a really overpowered enchanted bow, and for that I need levels, and villagers are a great way of getting levels. Here I saw Unbreaking, and I clicked on it thinking I'd get more than just Unbreaking, but unfortunately I didn't. It's sad. I sold literally all my wood, so now I have to chop again to get more levels. Please, 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 yes! This just goes to show that if you gamble for long enough, eventually you will win. But we've been spending a lot of time at base lately, so now it's time for some adventure! I sailed for a while and eventually found this snow biome. I collected snowballs and spruce trees, which I actually haven't had until now. I also found a snow village. There wasn't anything new here, but it was cool. I sailed for a while and I saw this tree and I thought it was a mangrove swamp. I got really excited and went there immediately, but it turns out it was just a regular old tree. At least there was a village here, but that was such a waste. I found two ruined portals also. It would have been nice gold if I didn't burn most of it. But come to think of it, I don't really recognize where I am. I might be lost. Fun fact, did you know the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans don't mix? Oh, okay, I know where I am now. This is where the rig is. You know, when the rig might be terrible with producing monsters, at least it is a nice landmark, so I know where I am. I'm not done doing fun stuff on day 87, though. I made my own minigame. It's called Four Corners. Pretty much what you do, every round you pick a corner and you press a button, and if your color gets picked, then you lose. It's actually pretty fun. I encourage you guys to build this in your survival worlds. I got a streak of 10. If you can beat me, leave a comment and tell me. I'm not sure what compelled me to do this today, but I wanted to go to the nether and wanted fire rest potions for it. But it turns out I don't have nether wart, so I have to go to the nether to get nether wart to make fire potions for the nether. But the saddest part is I loot the nether fortress terribly, so I don't actually find any. I find some later in the video, but just not right now, so let's just go the next day. Since the video is almost over, I want to make my base look as good as possible. I don't want any more ugly spots. So today I'm cleaning up the front of the base. I'm making a proper patio for it, finally. Oh yeah, it's gonna have glowstone lights, it's gonna all be made out of cobblestone. It is going to look amazing. Or at least amazing as you can get and don't touch anything. Remember when I said the sheep farm wouldn't be done until day 98? Well, I lied. We're actually gonna finish it early on day 90. All I'm really doing is replacing all the ugly blocks with some glass. It's gonna look nice. Day 91, I'm planning and collecting items for something very special. Yes, I have to kill the squids. The squid ink is necessary. Also, just have to smelt tons of stone today. Now it's day 92. It's time to reveal the surprise. It doesn't involve any villager slavery, iron golem deaths, or deforestation. Right by my base, there's a beautiful mountain where I've always wanted to put something. And you know, I fit in just perfectly. If you've ever seen Mount Rushmore, I'm basically just building Mount Rushmore, but I'm putting my head in it. It's gonna look really good. I'm using some exotic blocks for this. Netherrack, concrete, it's gonna look really good. I like what I did with the eyelids. It's accurate to my skin and it makes it pop. By the next day, it was finished and it just looks beautiful. I love it. I totally wanna build something similar to this in my main survival world. I celebrated the completed construction by playing some Four Corners. I actually, like, unironically like playing it. Why is it actually fun? I'm still doing artsy stuff on day 93. I'm building a money tree. Yeah, I have so many emeralds nowadays, I'm putting it in a tree. Although this is kind of embarrassing, I actually didn't have enough emeralds to finish it. I thought it would take less than I actually had. It's fine, we'll just do some quick trading, and now it's done. I guess money does grow on trees. During the night, I got an absolutely insane diamond sword. Unfortunately, there's not enough time to do it anymore, but if you want to see me do it in 2,000 days, like the video, and maybe I will. Day 95, I did literally nothing the entire day. Here, I time-lapsed it. I must have been pooping or something. Day 96, I'm back in the nether, though. I finally got nether wart in the part of the fortress I didn't explore. That was all. But you also may have noticed that I found diamond armor in that chest, and now I'm looking for a horse on 97. Although, when I got on the horse, I didn't really have a plan for him, so he spit me out on ground that wasn't mine, so I died. It's okay, when I tried again, I trapped him in this massive pen, and then I tamed him. 
Although I left him downstairs to get materials for a stable, but then he went to my nether portal and I couldn't get him out for the life of me. It took so long. I got him back, but that was such a headache and it took forever. But now I'm finally building that stable on day 98. I really love how it turned out. Normally I'm pretty terrible at building stables, but this one looks exceptionally well. I love it, and I'm sure he will love it too. And on the night of day 98, I actually got Sniper Duel. That was clutch, right at the end of the video. Here's my live reaction. Yo, no way! Day 99, I'm taking one last adventure with the horse. I mean, I have like two days to get to know him, so I may as well. This horse is really going to be useful if I go to 200 days. We didn't really find anything useful, but it was really fun, and we saw some cool landscapes. But now I'm waking up at the crack of dawn for day 100. I pretty much just explored everything I built in these 100 days, you know? Got time to reflect. I never in a million years thought I'd get this far. These villagers were clutch. And of course the rig was completely useless, but you know, it was a fun build. But all in all, I am glad I have them, because they might be useful in 200 days. Speaking of 200 days, if you want me to do that, like the video. And I will. We'll say like 50 likes and we can do a part 2. And also make sure you watch my other videos. But also like, comment, and subscribe, and join my Discord, and follow my Twitter. Play my game, Parkour for Dummies, and subscribe to my second channel all kinds of stuff going on there. But on day 100, I just wanted to relax and watch the sun go down for one last time.